thank you. Wow, what a beautiful presence this morning. Um, I feel that there's a number of you in the room and probably many online who have been um, almost like attacked in your in your worship or in your focus with distraction and you know you'll start to love on the Lord and all of a sudden your minds other places and you feel a disconnect in your heart does anyone in the room relate with that yeah a number of you and the Lord gave me um, something for you because you're in a season of increase right now. This is a season of increase. God has declared it over his people. And we learned last week that one of the catalysts for increase is sowing and reaping. It's, it's a spiritual law, and it was put into place right back in Genesis, Genesis 8, 22. It says, as long as the earth remains, and it's still remaining right now, there will be seed time, a time to sow, with a corresponding harvest. So whatever you sow, you are going to reap. You know, it is, it is impossible not to if we position ourselves in the word. So in worship, I just want to give you just a little mentoring moment here. In worship, if you find yourself distracted, try sowing a focus of worship, even if it's for one minute. You could even intentionally set your clock and say, for the next 60 seconds, I am going to give God the fullness of my heart, my love, my words, my song, and only him will I focus on. And even if you do that for one minute, that is seed. That is seed into the heavens. You are sowing your worship into his heart. You are sowing it into him. And whenever you sow, you will get increase. And, and also another little tip, this has helped me in times when I've been distracted, is that I'll determine throughout my day to remember the Lord, even in the little things. Like, you know, you could be cooking a meal or something, and all of a sudden you just stop for a moment, say, Jesus, I just want to worship you, for you are worthy of my worship, and I want to give thanksgiving to you for having the food to cook and for the ability to stand here and cook a meal. You know, and you start releasing thanksgiving to him throughout your day you could be driving in the car and all of a sudden thanking God for his goodness sowing thanksgiving and worship and praise into his presence because when you sow into him you reap a harvest of him <laughs> of more Jesus okay so I just I just felt that in my spirit as we were um, worshiping that some of you how many of you needed that word today you needed that little nugget all right that's awesome so um, last week we started um, a word on position for increase in uh, 5782, the year 5782, on the Hebrew calendar. The new year is coming up, September 6th to 8th is Rosh Hashanah, which marks um, the new year on the, on the Hebrew uh, civil calendar. Ours uh, on the Gregorian calendar, of course, is January. It'll be 2022. But I really believe that this season is very significant. And of course, we want to position ourselves. We want to hear what is God saying and then positioning ourselves for everything that God has. And um, he just has been speaking to me so clear about, about expecting increase, that he wants to bring increase. So I started this last week, and if you weren't here, you can uh, watch it on YouTube. But I think it's a good message to, to review always. Of course, the law of sowing and reaping is amazing because that is your greatest um, foundation for increase, is sowing and reaping. So we spent some time on that today, and I'll spend some more time on it now. And so as I'm in the word and meditating on increase and worshiping the Lord about increase, I get an angelic visitation. And so on um, the third of this month, that was about five days ago, I, I was in prayer and I was um, praying for, you know, just different things in the kingdom and things in our life, actually. And all of a sudden, I saw this big harvest field. And it was, it was ripe. It was ready to be harvested. And I was reminded of the word that says, don't say there's, you know, four months and then the harvest. Now it's time to harvest. And what I sense the Lord say in that is that 
just start believing for a, a real quick increase because some of you have sown seed in the past that is ripe to harvest that needs to be harvested right now. And so start having an expectation for that harvest to come soon. But then as I'm looking in this vision on this field that was white with harvest, which I did feel represented a lot of souls, okay? All of a sudden this angel drops out of heaven. It just descends right down out of heaven in front of me whoa and it was it was looking at the at the field that was white with harvest and it had in its hand in its right hand it had a golden scepter and then it turned around and it stretched the scepter to, towards me and and i could feel the power of increase I could feel the power of increase. And what the Holy Spirit showed me is he said he is assigning this angel of increase to his people. It's a company of angels. It's not just one. A company of angels of increase in this season um, to serve us. That's what angels do according to Hebrews 1.14. They serve us who are heirs of salvation. And they're going to serve us with with impartations and presence of increase. And it could be the increase of like family salvation members, for example. It could be increase of answers to prayer. It could be increase of your uh, finances, your possessions. It could be increase of your anointing, increase of opportunities. Like it's just increase, increase, increase. Um, and so God wants you to expect the increase expect it um, because if this word comes which it's you know it's coming from the Lord to all of us his word can come but if we don't receive it even though it's available it won't do us any good we need to appropriate that word by faith and receive it by faith but I'm very very excited about this season and how many of you have hit warfare like never before <laughs> How many of you have had a good dose of warfare? Put up your hands. Just let me see. Oh, yeah. I could put up my hand this morning, too. It's just been uh, relentless. Um, but we know that we win, right? And so we sow into our victories as well. So just think of sowing. Think of increase. Think of the Lord's goodness in this season. And um, keep your mind free from things that would be contrary to that. So I want to just review quickly what we looked at last week. And um, because I'll just um, run through kind of the headlines of it. Uh, we looked at some facts about increase. Um, the increase is a spiritual and a natural law, the law of sowing and reaping out of Genesis 8.22. Secondly, increase is not determined by the stability of the economic status in the world, but rather the stability of the economic status of the kingdom of God, Colossians 3 and Hebrews 12. Um, number three, increase is not limited to influencing the realms of money and possessions, but also health, relationship, favor, emotional soundness, souls, ministry, anointing, gifting, etc. Number four, increase was spoken over mankind at creation, Genesis 1.28. And the fifth fact that we looked at was increase begins with planting a seed, but the harvest is always greater than the seed. Okay, and then we looked at preparing for increase through sowing. And we looked at the four realms. When you plant a seed, it has the potential to create four realms for you. And we looked at the, the realm of reaping, which it said in Genesis uh, 26, 12, and 13, that Isaac reaped a hundredfold in that first year, in that year. And also... Uh, secondly, he was blessed. So there was a realm of blessing that came into his life. He became rich. We talked about that being a realm, not just a personal blessing, but it was a realm of being rich, which is enough for your own needs overflowing. And then until he became extremely wealthy, and we looked at that and, and described that, of course, as being uh, that which your riches influence. So when you influence the world with your riches, that is your wealth. And then we looked at identifying your harvest and your seed um, because your seed, it actually represents your harvest. So, for example, if you've got an apple seed in your hand, that's not just a seed, that's your harvest. Inside that seed is a harvest 
on a big harvest because when that apple tree grows, you'll get lots of apples, but then there's seeds inside the apples. Every apple has more seeds. So there's orchards and orchards inside that seed. And so when you're sowing, whatever you're sowing into, God wants you to look at the harvest because that seed represents your harvest. And um, I wanted to share a testimony on that this morning uh, because I know that um, some of you, the Lord's highlighted this to me, that there's uh, some of you that are really pressing in in the area of finance. And finance is a big portion of our life, okay? So we need finance to go to the grocery store and buy our, our groceries and that. We don't trust in finance because actually God can bring you groceries to your house too. Uh, but he doesn't mind you having finance to do what you need to do in the world. So most of our transactions are done through finance. So it is a big part of our lives here on planet Earth. You won't need money in heaven. It's not, it's not a heavenly currency. It's just an earthly currency. But um, uh, many people get worried about it and concerned about it. Um, but I wanted to share this testimony because it's fairly recent. Um, and it was a time when uh, COVID had, had hit. So COVID hits the world. And for many ministries, it was like, okay, now what? Like, for example, churches. I heard many pastors say, we don't know what we're going to do financially because uh, we can't meet. Our churches are closed down. What are we going to do? There were concerns there. You know that the spirit of fear was the, one of the biggest entities that hit us during uh, COVID, hit, hit the world during COVID. Didn't hit us, but, um, you know, it was out there. And so many pastors were saying that. Many ministries were wondering, of course, business people as well. They're wondering, where, where's our bread and butter going to come? We've got to shut down our business. We've got to do this, that, the other. And um, as a ministry, we just sat down and said, well, we know what we're going to do about this. We're just going to sow seed. And so we just got the checkbook out. And we wrote checks, check after check after check we wrote. And um, we, we wrote checks to ministries, we wrote checks to individuals in needs, um, and, and we just, you know, we just went for it. And we never lacked a thing. In fact, we ended up after the first year with way more than we had when we started the year. And the second year was the same. But we just kept sowing and sowing with intentionality with love and with faith, um, because it's, it's, it's kingdom economy, sowing and reaping, and God will always uh, give you what you need. Um, he will always bless you. Okay, secondly, we discuss at the harvest. What, what harvest are you partnering uh, with God on? So if you are sowing and you're looking for increase in your life, make sure that you're one with God. Don't just say, oh, well, I wonder what I can do to increase this or increase that. Sit down in the presence of the Lord and get his mind, his heart, his partnership so that you can go into the fields and sow your seed together. And, um, and you can frame your future through sowing for increase. You can actually, with God, he can show you exactly what he wants to do in your life, what he wants to increase. And so you can actually create your future in the now so that you can walk into it because he's shown you what to do and you uh, sow into it. And so you can uh, intentionally sow into your, your future with financial seed and, um, and with decrees over your health, with, you know, decrees of the word or seed, you can decree it over your health, your strength, your vision, your fruitfulness. Um, you can sow into legacy. That's what I'm doing in this stage of my life right now is saying, God, what can I sow to leave behind? I want my fruit to remain. So what can I, what can I sow? And then that will, will grow further fruit that will, will remain. Uh, thirdly, what seeds will produce your desired harvest? So a lot of times, rather than just thinking of what seed do I have to sow, think what harvest do I desire? What do I want to receive in my life? I remember when my boys were really young, I made a, um, a, a graph for them just as a kind of a craft, actually. Uh, but it was a piece of paper with boxes. And I said, this is your, this is your garden for life here. You know, and we... 
we wrote down all the categories of their life that meant a lot to them. And I said, now we need a seed bag. We're going to create a seed bag, and we're going to sow seeds into each part of that life because that's how you're going to get what you're desiring out of it. And we're going to do this with God. And so we sat down for every sector of life. So you can do the same. What, what you are living in today is the harvest of yesterday. And by the way, the harvest, seeds will harvest whether they're good seed or bad seed. <laughs> you know, so you, you can sow thorns and thistles and weeds and corrupt seed, or you can sow he healthy seed, but you will reap. You will get an increase of something in your life. And I just want to say that what I've noticed is as I've observed people making wrong decisions, sowing, sowing wrong seed into their life, is that they do get an increase of harm in their life. They get an increase of negative things, of, of that which they've sown. So this, this law of increase is based on your sowing and reaping. And if you sow, you will reap, and you all sow which means you'll all reap. I think the question is, how much will you reap and what will you reap, right? And we get to determine that. So I can look at my harvest then, or my desired harvest, and say, hmm, I'm going to sow into this harvest right now because this is what I want, so I know exactly what seed to sow into it. This is God's desire for me, so this is what I'm going to sow into. And so you can intentionally sow into your harvest. It says in Galatians 6, 7, whatever a person sows, this he will also reap. It's very clear in Scripture. This is very foundational, very powerful. And when you start to work it with intentionality in your life, it's, it, it's amazing. If you just let life go by and say, I'll just go with the wind or whatever, you know, there's, there's no field of harvest waiting for you. Everything's just fragmented in that. So um, take opportunity to... Um, to plant the seeds that will produce your harvest. So so intentionally into revival as an example. If you're looking for revival and saying, oh, I'd really love to have revival. Well, that's a great desire. And God will partner with you on that one. He, he will love to partner with you on, on a revival harvest, right? And But if you just do nothing to sow into it, Someone else might get a harvest, but you're probably, you might enjoy someone else's harvest even, but you won't have your own, right? And so there's things that you can sow into it, like prayer and worship and, and expectation and, and imagining. And so um, sowing is uh, really vital in order to get your harvest. And um, even into a harvest of souls, right? You know, if you if you want souls, like praying Hyde, I think a lot of you know about a story. He was an evangelist that went over to to India, and he he said, "Give me souls, or I'll die." But he just every day went out and and sowed the gospel. He went out on the streets. He found people. In fact, he was believing God for one soul a day when he started. He said, "I'm not going to bed at night until I win that one soul." And he got to a place where he won souls every day. He won a soul. Then he said, okay, now I want two a day. And he wouldn't go to sleep at night until there was two, minimum of two a day. And then three a day, four a day, 16 a day, whatever. It was just massive meetings. He started to, to build the harvest through massive meetings where people would get saved all in one sweep. But you see, he was sowing seed into that. He was sowing prayer. He was sowing decree. And if you're looking for a harvest of souls, you might need to connect with them. You might need to build relationship with them. That's your seed, right? Is to go and love on people and, and just bless them um, because they, they are God's precious ones and because you have great desire for them. And that love that you're sowing will reap a harvest. So... And increased revelation and spiritual encounters is, is one that I'm going for now. And I just it's just amazing. I've been positioning myself in prayer and in worship and also sowing decrees of the word regarding revelation and encounters. And it's been crazy awesome. I've been getting like numerous encounters in the Lord, especially visionary encounters 
every single week and angelic visitations, an acceleration way more than I've had before. But you see, it's sewing into it. And even when you get teaching in an area that you want to grow in, right? Like a number of our people have taken the Masha course. And so they're sewing into their life the teaching, the word on, on healing of the soul and deliverance, right? So they're sewing that word into them. And guess what? It is producing fruit. It's producing a harvest of freedom for the people that they're ministering to. There's great things happening as a result of it. Um, if you want to prophesy, many of you went and took the prophetic course. And as you get that word in you, because you sat there and you, you, you planted the word, you know, expecting a harvest of increased prophetic through your life. So as you plant that and water it and, you know, just utilize that, you will grow in the prophetic. Okay, and then what size of harvest do you desire? So accordingly, we looked at that last week as well. Galatians 6.6, um, 6, um, I say to you, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows generously will also reap generously. And the one who sows nothing will reap nothing. You know, it's just the way this works, okay? And I do believe, I just want to throw this in right now, I, I really believe the Lord's shown me that houses and lands are going to increase for the church. So it could be like ministries getting an increase of lands, individuals getting houses and lands. So start sowing decrees into that. Start, start sowing into it. Um, whatever you sow into, that's what you can expect to to reap. And I remember years ago when we first came down to to Arizona, um, and that was over 20, no, about 20 years ago now, um, we lived in this little resort trailer park. It was like where snowbirds come, right? And we had this little trailer that we lived in. That was our home that we lived in here, okay? And then, um, and then we were uh, blessed with a, a, a bigger trailer. So what we did is that we had met Robert by that time. So we gave Robert our first home in Arizona, which was this trailer, OK? So we said, here, Robert, here's the keys. And so he lived in that trailer. And that was his home when he first moved to Arizona. And then um, God opened up an opportunity. You see, when you sow, if you sow corn, you'll reap corn. So we sowed a house. You know, it was a trailer house, but it was a house. Right? It was our house. Okay? So we sold the house, and then we were able to buy a house in Arizona here. And we have blessed with housing. We have blessed and blessed. We've given houses away since then. We've, we've um, blessed people with living in houses, sometimes for free, or, or sold houses to people with even less than what we paid for it so that they could be blessed. We've done that. But as a result of that, we kept, keep getting blessed with, with houses and lands. We just keep getting blessed. We are so blessed with housing. You know, we own multiple places. And so, um, and we don't have any debt on it. It's all paid off, right? And so, um, but it started with a seed. Well, then Robert, he gives his house away. He gave the same trailer away to a homeless man, actually, a man who didn't have a home. And so he gave that trailer to him to, to live in. And that man was so happy. He was so blessed and happy to have a place of his own. They didn't have to sleep out on the streets anymore. He was so blessed. And so he stayed in that uh, uh, trailer because, you know, it was given to him. And Robert gets a house. Well, now Robert and Yuri have multiple properties, right? And it's just crazy. But it starts with a seed. So, so it was a seed, right? So, like, you might not have a house to give away, or you might not, you know, feel the prompting to give away, but could you give away a month's rent for someone? Could you give away, you know, something that would help that has to do with houses? If you want your own house, let's say, I always tell people, if you want your own house, dream big, because God wants to give you one, but sow toward it, sow into that right? And so um, find something to sew into. We, um, we moved into a new house this last year, um, but the house here, the studio, needed to be completely renovated. So during COVID, we actually did a full renovation 
on all this building except this room. And so, um, and it took a lot of money for it. So I intentionally sewed into that, but then it was just months later when I had a house that I needed to fully renovate. And so the heavens opened and everything was there to renovate the house. But it's just find something in the area that you want to see your return on to receive the blessing back. And it might not be a house. Maybe that's not, um, you know, that might not be your desire. And of course, it's for natural things and spiritual things. It, you know, don't, don't just say, oh, well, God would never want to bless a person with a house. Are you kidding? It says, all the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, all that dwell in it and all that it contains. So it's like, yes, of course he wants to multiply. In Deuteronomy 8, he told Israel that he was going to take them into the promised land where they would get houses and lands. And so any time that we've blessed, you know, any time that we've blessed people with um, anything to do with housing, we've always increased in it. But you just put your faith out for that. Um, Okay, so I want to talk right now about identifying your soil. And um, in Mark 4, 26 to 32, um, Jesus is sharing the parable of the sower who goes out and sows the word, and he sows it on these different soils, okay? And every, every soil that he sowed, because it was the same seed, he, he sowed the word, but depending on the soil was how it was going to return, okay? So first of all, you need to know that when you're sowing your seed, it has to go into soil. If you're sowing seed, it has to go into soil because if you leave it in the little seed packet, it's not, I mean, you could keep it in the packet for years, but it doesn't grow in the packet. It grows in the soil. So you know, that's why it says don't, you know, just save up everything and store everything in barns because it is to be sown. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with having savings account or having goals for your finance and stuff like that. But the principle is, is that if you're going to increase, you need to look at sowing and not just keeping it tight in a little seed bag. So in Mark 4, 26 to 32, um, it says, Jesus was saying the kingdom of God, so he's talking about what the kingdom of God is like, is like a man who casts seed upon the soil, and he goes to bed at night and gets up daily. And the seed sprouts and grows, but how? He himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. Now when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So Jesus is explaining, and this is after he's already you know, given the whole discourse about the different types of soil. Then he gives this, this other parable saying that, that um, the kingdom of God this is how the kingdom operates, is through sowing and reaping. This is how it operates. So if you're going to be in the kingdom, it's like everything is going to increase through sowing. Everything is going to increase through sowing. You will not get increased without sowing. And if, it's not, and if you are increasing, it could be someone else sowed on your behalf as well. Um, Okay, so it says he casts his seed upon the soil. That's the other thing. Where did he put it? He put it in the soil. Okay, then he went, up, went to bed. Um, and night after night, he goes to sleep. He wakes up in the morning, and eventually this, he, he, he gets a crop. He didn't do anything more than that in this particular parable. Then he also says, the parable of the mustard seed, says Jesus was saying, how shall we picture the kingdom of God? So again, he's trying to explain to us how the kingdom works. Or by what parable shall we present it? It is like a mustard seed. There we go again with the seed, which when sown in the soil, though it is the smallest of all seeds that are upon the soil, yet when it is grown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and forms large branches with the result that the birds of the sky can nest under its shade. So he's saying you'll get an increase from the smallest seed into this great big tree. It'll increase that seed if it's sown in soil. Okay, so... We want to make sure that we sow it in soil and um, um, 
I can give you some examples of soil because we wonder, well, what would soil be like practically? What would that look like? Well, it could be um, the Lord's ministry. So it could be sowing the word. Every time we sow the word, I try to intentionally sow the word every single day, put it out there in the atmosphere every single day. And it's easy these days because you can just get on social media and, and put the word out. It's easy. Um, but you can phone people and share a word, or you can text them with a word. Or, you know, I love sowing the word every day because that word has, is, it, it is full of power and it goes and accomplishes things. So we can spread the kingdom and the Lord's ministry by sowing the word every day. Um, I can expand the Lord's ministry uh, if, if that is the. Um, soil that I'm sowing my seed, I can sow finance into that. And that is good soil. Um, if I want to grow in anointing, I can sow into the Lord's ministry by, by um, cultivating um, that anointing. Um, there could be kingdom realities such as health. We can sow into our health. How can you do that? By exercising, by um, you know, breathing some fresh air, by eating well. Um, we can, and, and by decreeing the word, of course, um, we can um, sow into freedom. You know, believe for freedom for people. I shared the example of the Masha teaching. We can sow into relationships. And what about marriage and family? Marriages don't just happen to get good one day. If you have a good marriage, it's because you sowed into that, right? You need to sow into the good marriage. And with your love, with your kindness, with communication, with decrees of the word, with all those things. But whatever you sow, you will reap. Sow into your family. I mentioned land, vocations, and calling. Um, I know a few of my friends right now um, studied to get their real estate license because they wanted to become realtors. That's a good dream to become a realtor and to be able to find houses for people. That's an excellent dream. But it doesn't just fall in your lap. You have to sow to get the dream right? You have to sow into the training. You have to pay for the training, get the training, study, and you know, put your focus into it in order to get it. And that's the same with any career. And you have to you know, sow into the training, sow time, sow focus. And I, I mentioned already the quality of soil out of Mark 420. Sorry about the um, different types that, that you can sow on. But Jesus said, if you sow on good soil, you will always increase. If you sow on good soil, you will bear fruit 30, 60, and even 100 times as much. Okay, so soil is important. Um, and good soil is sowing your, 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 whatever you're sowing into, into what has given good fruit, proven fruit. So if you want to increase in finances, for example, or receive godly input into raising children or to grow in the development of character and anointing, you're not going to receive your input from those who have no success in that area. You're not going to go so into the areas that have no, no fruit, no maturity, no established blessing. You're going to go and sow your time, sow your financial seed, sow your attention, your focus into um, ministries or individuals or training programs that have a proven track record, right? That's just, I mean, this is all very practical, but I think sometimes the body needs real practical teaching, you know, because we're just so sometimes just not building our lives when we can. I mean, Jesus was a builder. Moses was a builder, right? It's, it's like we can build our lives with the tools that God has given us. Okay, so now I want to go um, today about watering your seed. Water your seed with expectation because once it's in the ground, and many of you have lots, lots of good seed in the ground, okay? And maybe some of you have not so good seed, like Okay, so when I was raising my boys, I, I sowed some really good seed into their life. But there was also some other seed that wasn't so good, right? I had to believe for a crop failure on those ones. <laughs> I literally had to go and pull out the weeds. I had to, you know, and, you know, pull out all the, 
all the junky stuff that I went and sowed into their lives so that it could be, you know, a, a clean, beautiful field for them to grow in, right? So you want to water your seed um, and, and expect good things to come from it and have expectation for it to produce for you. So one of the things I like to do is to keep a record of my seed. And um, I've been doing that. I've got a fresh little book right now. I shared about this last week. A fresh little seed book that every time I sow something, it could be a word of encouragement, it could be finance, it could be a gift to someone, it could be whatever, I sow um, and record because when I look back over it, and I've been looking back from you know the beginning of this, this new book, I thought, man, I've sown a lot of seed. This is exciting. You know, you can even sow into other people's destinies, and then when when you look at it, you think, "Thank you, Lord." That seed not only to see them grow into their destiny, but I'm I'm also going to receive it back because it will fulfill more destiny in my life too. Okay, so. Just look at your, your uh, seed bag. Otherwise, you will forget what you've sown. And you will forget where you've sown it. So let's say that you're a farmer, and you go throw some seed out there, but you don't really take note of where you sowed it. You go down the street and throw some more seed out, and go down the street and sow some more seed, but you forget what seed you sowed and where, and so you've got a harvest. The harvest is going to grow, but you can't even remember where you sowed it. And so you don't go and reap it because you forgot that you even sowed it. Wow. And so many Christians have such big harvests out there. But because they never focused on the harvest, they never focused on increase and didn't with intentionality bring it back into their life. So that's why I'm saying keep a little booklet if you can, because then you can remember, you know what? I seed into destiny in that person's life there. This is how I did it. Lord, increase that seed to work in their life, and I also receive the harvest of it for increased destiny in mine. You know? And you can do it with every single thing that you sow. If you want friends, how do you get friends? You sow friendship, right? You don't sit back and say, oh, man, nobody loves me. Everyone hates me. I'm going to the garden to eat worms because you'll just get more worms, right? But if you start sowing friendship and, you know, and not even looking for right away for your harvest, because, you know, I've seen this over and over when we've told people who have kind of said, oh, I've been in the church for, you know, I remember back up in Canada, this uh, couple said, well, you know, we've been in this church now for, I think it was six months or something like that. And no one has once invited us out. No one's tried to talk to us. No one's tried to meet us. And I said, I'm so sorry about that, you know. Um, but have you reached out to anyone else? Have you reached out to anyone? And they said, well, we shouldn't be reaching out. They should be reaching out. And I thought, well, yeah, you could do it that way, but it doesn't look like it's working, <laughs> right? So why don't you sow into some relationships? And so they did. They started to do that, and they started to invite couples over and their families over Sunday after church. That's what they started with. Well... A few months later, they're telling me how great and how glorious this has been. And it turned out that they actually became elders in that church in less than two years later. They became elders in the church and remained with that church until they moved away into retirement years later. And they had the whole church was friends with them. But you see, they sowed friendship. You know, they sowed it. So... What, what are you sowing? And have expectation, okay? So keep record of your seed. Um, secondly, praise. War over your seed with praise. You know, just, you know, if you're contending for a breakthrough or an increase in an area, just say, just praise the Lord. Lord, you're, this praise is like rain and sunshine over my seed. I am thanking you and I'm praising you for the great harvest. I see it. And that's what a farmer does, really, right? He looks out on that field. He knows he's planted seed in it. He gets happy every time he thinks about it, you know, because he knows he's going to get a harvest. So just let your, your praise ascend to the Lord. Let your thanksgiving ascend to him because it will 
it will uh, water your seed and war over it. If you see, how many of you have sown a seed? Like, let's say a financial seed. That's the easiest one to monitor here. And immediately, you get, you get attacked after it. It, it. It's like you sow a seed and then all hell breaks loose on your finance. Right? Anyone experience that? I have. Absolutely. So you have to war because that's not what the word says. The word says that you are going to get a harvest. So what are we going to believe? You know, what are we going to believe? That the devourers got the seed? Or that the Lord's caring for it and there's going to be a great harvest? So when you praise the Lord, it's a warring against the devourer. You're warring against him. Okay, and third... Decree the promises of God over your seed with expectation. Like, let's say you're sowing anointing. So you are, you are um, praying in tongues. That's good seed, you know, and you're stirring up the anointing. And, and um, you know, you are believing God for a harvest of sick people being healed. Okay, you're believing for that. And so you have sown into that anointing and you're going out and you are, you are laying hands on the sick, just like it says in the Bible to do. You're taking steps of faith to release healing to people, okay? And maybe at first you're not seeing that many uh, people manifest their healing. So decree the word. When you get you know, home or whatever, decree the word, said, Lord, you send forth your, your word to heal. You said, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And so I'm watering my seed and I'm warring with the word of God over that which I've already sown. And I'm going to get a harvest of healing. So many people are going to get healed. Now, if you keep sowing, you're going to have a breakthrough into a realm of healing. And it's the same with the prophetic. It's the same with worship leading. You know, Desiree, that was amazing worship this morning. It was just so anointed. But I remember the first time that you led worship here. And you were, you you know, you didn't have the confidence you had today, you know. But, but you sowed into it. You sowed that seed. And then she kept sowing and sowing and sowing. And look at what we have now. We're all getting blessed. But she is growing. She's increasing in her anointing and her, her authority in leading worship. And it's like it can happen in any area of your life. Um, okay, and then um, the next one is, and we'll, we'll probably close with this one, unwavering faith, okay? Unwavering faith. Have expectation with unwavering faith. And so war when the enemy comes to you and says, oh, look at, you are sowing this seed, but look at you. I was um, sowing seed into my 70th decade, uh, or my, my 70th, yeah, the decade of my 70th year. And, um, and I'd been sowing for a whole year, the decree of the Lord, the strength, vitality, all this stuff, had an amazing party. And the next day I land up in hospital, you know, and it's like all these challenges come my way. Now I can say, oh man, I guess those decrees aren't anything. I guess what I really was believing for isn't going to happen. No. No, I can't do that. Why? Because the Lord's promise increase. Am I going to be all frail and not able to do anything in my, in my next decade? Absolutely not. That is not going to happen. I'm going to be full of vitality and strength in that because I've sown into that. Okay? Does that make sense to you? So it's like we need to um, have unwavering faith no matter what is coming our way, no matter what is staring us in the face, saying, no, the word says this. The word says I'm going to be full of sap in my older years. And um, so that's what I'm expecting. And so that's a lot of juice in your branches. Okay. And also in Job 14, 7 to 9, it says, For there is hope for a tree, that when it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and its shoots will not fail. And though its roots grow old in the ground, and its stump dies in the dry soil, at the scent of water it will flourish and produce sprigs like a plant. And I felt as I was preparing, I felt that word was for someone specifically, that you had had dreams that you had sown into, that you had worked, that you'd been diligent with, and, and it just came to nothing. Something got cut off because of circumstance. Your dream was annihilated. 
But the Lord says, this is time for that to increase. This is time for not only that to grow back up again, but for it to be bigger than ever. Because even at the very scent of water, it will grow. It will grow. And so many of you are going to increase from dreams that you had in your heart years ago that you never saw materialize. And I saw in my spirit that some of you had dreams that you moved into and that they, they grew to a certain place and then were like chopped down. It was like it, like it was like getting the rug pulled out from underneath you. And there was trauma as a result of it too. And I pray that that trauma will be healed in Jesus' name. Let's get that trauma all healed up. Amen. And so um, God says that you haven't seen anything yet. Your harvest is still going to come. Your increase is going to come. The fulfillment of that desire and that dream is still on its way. Amen. Did you get anything out of this morning? Some things that will establish you in some faith to, to grow and increase. Because I'm telling you, it's on the table. God put increase on the banquet table for this season. And it's available for all of us. And I want every Shiloh night to grow in this increase. It is going to be so good. And many of you have already started to see the increase in your life. You know, Glenn's, and Glenn's enjoying increase, right? The increase of your dream got fulfilled. And, you know, it's just wonderful to hear a lot of your testimonies of, of what God's been doing. It's increase. And don't, don't let the devil put fear in you. Don't let the devil, you know, say, oh, it's hopeless. There's nothing there. It's just always going to be like this. No, this is increase of every good thing in the Lord for you. So Father, we thank you so much for all that you're doing in our midst. We thank you for the increase, Lord, that you have offered to us and the angel of increase. I dispatch that angel right now in Jesus' name, and I thank you that it's going to every Shiloh night, that company of increase angels with a scepter, uh, which has, bears authority to release increase. Lord, we just receive that angelic assignment for each Shiloh night in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Amen.